Hi, in this video we're going to introduce a new model for building machine learning systems based on machine learning pipelines. In particular we're going to talk about feature pipelines, training pipelines and inference pipelines. Those three machine learning pipelines or ML pipelines make up a machine learning system. So the feature pipeline we're going to talk about will be used to create features from some raw input data. The training pipeline will take those features and labels if we have a supervised machine learning model to create a model. And then finally, an inference pipeline will take new data and the model and make predictions. Together, that will make up our machine learning system. We're gonna focus on building these three pipelines with the infrastructure provided by Hopsworks. So how did we get to this particular model? We're gonna look a little bit at the background of how we got there. So we started out many years ago, understanding that machine learning system construction was difficult. This image from 2015 by Google became very well known and it showed basically that training a machine learning model is only a tiny part of building a machine learning system. The unfortunate part about this is it doesn't really give you a map for how to build a machine learning system. It's just showing you a lot of boxes and saying you need all of these parts to build your machine learning system. So ML ops or machine learning operations emerged as a discipline to help us understand how to build machine learning systems, to give us a mental map for how to build machine learning systems. Unfortunately, the mental maps that we got in ML ops 1.0 have been very confusing. So this is a mental map from Google. This is showing you at the top of the dashed line, we have the development or test phase. We have to build some boxes, quite a lot of them. And then to go to production, we have to add many more boxes. So this is a very complex way to build a system. It's almost like the software lifecycle development model that we have in software engineering. It's not about starting small, iterating and making things better that we had in DevOps. It's really bringing us back in time. And, and Databricks showed something similar. They've just gone down the same route, but they've added staging to the development and production environments to make it even more complex. So we don't want to go in that direction. We want to go back to fundamentals and say, okay, what is it that makes a machine learning system? So you can say that a, a, a machine learning model that's trained on static data is not a machine learning system. It's a one-off ML experiment. You can generate one-off predictions with that model you've trained on your static data. To build a machine learning system, you need to have new data coming in that you can make predictions on. The model will generate more value when it keeps making predictions on more and more data. So that means that you could have a batch machine learning system. It would take in batches of data. It'll run on a schedule, maybe once a day, maybe once a week or once an hour. And it will take in the new data and make predictions on the model. And that will generate and keep adding the business value. And that's great. And real-time machine learning systems will take in data continuously and they'll continue to make predictions and do that with very fresh or recent data and that can add even more business value. So we're gonna need these pipelines, these data pipelines, the batch pipelines or the real-time pipelines in order to build these machine learning systems. Now, this is our model for building machine learning systems. We call it the feature training and inference pipeline model. There's no one machine learning pipeline here, so we don't ever really talk about ML pipelines except in so far as to say, these are the ML pipelines, but there is no one ML pipeline. The ML pipeline is the coverall describing these three pipelines. And that's a really good insight when you're building a machine learning system. If somebody says to you, well, I'm building an ML pipeline, so what is the output? Because if the output of your pipeline are the features and the labels, it's a feature pipeline. If the output is a model, it's a training pipeline. And if the output are predictions, it's an inference pipeline. And the great thing about this particular architecture is it unifies both batch machine learning systems and the real-time machine learning systems, the interactive machine learning systems. You can use the same three different pipelines to describe both systems. And if we take the feature pipeline, if it's a batch feature pipeline, it'll run on a schedule, it'll create features every hour, every day. If you want continuous feature data coming in, you can write a streaming feature pipeline and you can dive deeper into the details of what it means to have a feature pipeline. Will it do data validation? Will you use great expectations of the framework for that? How often will it run? How much data will it generate? Do I need to use large data to process this or could I do it with small data? Similarly with the training pipeline, 
you can get into the details of what framework we'll use to train the model. Will it be a decision tree? Will it be a deep neural network? Uh, where will we get the features from? We're going to get them from the feature pipeline somehow. And we'll look at that in a second with a, a feature store. Finally, our inference pipeline, whether it's a real-time machine learning system or a batch machine learning system, it's going to have to get in some new data. That data may come from the feature pipeline. It could also come, it might only be available at request time. So the, the user provides it through user interface, for example. And then we'll have the model from the, from the training pipeline that was created will be used to make the predictions. So these pipelines, you could think that they talk to one another, but they're actually independent. You can develop them separately. And this is very useful in terms of modularity of your system. So different teams can take responsibility for developing the different pipelines, work independently, and they're able to interact because the interfaces are clear. The feature pipeline produces features. The training pipeline ingests features and creates models. The inference pipeline ingests features and a model and makes predictions. So those interfaces are clear. These can be developed independently. They can be operated independently. Here we can see that we can see that the uh, feature pipeline can be implemented in batch. So pandas, if you have small data, maybe Spark with large data. It could be streaming with Flink or Spark streaming. Training pipelines, you have many different machine learning pipelines in, in, uh, in Python. So scikit-learn, PyTorch, and in inference pipelines, if it's a batch system with small data, Python might be fine. If you have big data, PySpark. In online machine learning systems, typically it's Python because the models are typically trained in Python. So your online inference or serving environment will typically be Python. So if we take the example of the feature pipeline, you can see here's a, a very simple mental map for to, help, to help you decide what technology to use to implement your feature pipeline. If you have big data and you, you're building a batch feature pipeline, well, you might have a data warehouse and you can use DBT, or you might have Spark and you'll say, well, that's useful, it'll help me. If you have small data, maybe pandas in Python and polars are useful frameworks for you. If you're doing streaming uh, feature pipeline, meaning you're gonna stream and create features in real time, Flink is a very popular choice. It can scale to handle huge volumes of data. Um, but you might have only need to do a small amount of data and you like Python, so ByteWax might be more uh, appropriate for your use case. The next part of feature pipelines and also of, of, of inference pipelines is they need to be orchestrated. And because the model is very open, so this feature training inference model is very open, you can implement them and operate them in different frameworks. So batch pipelines could be operated in Airflow, which is a popular data pipeline uh, orchestration framework. Streaming applications can run on platforms that support Flink or Spark Streaming, like Hopsworks or Databricks. Um, you can, we've seen Modal as a, a very lightweight uh, or simple orchestrator with cron-based orchestration, which is very popular for uh, inference programs in machine learning as well. And then, of course, your training pipelines don't necessarily need to be operated. They could be run in a schedule with Airflow, but you could also just create the models when you need them. So maybe because your models are degrading or just because you think you need a new model. And then finally, for model serving, you can plug in the best model serving framework for your needs. When we want to build these machine learning systems, and the pipelines are obviously outputting features, models, and predictions, and we're pulling them together. In our case, we pull them together with Hopsworks, which provides the feature store, but also it has its own model registry, which of course is pluggable. If you have your own MLflow, you can use that. And, but once we've built our system and we've built these three pipelines, now we can iterate and improve it. So one of the things you need to do in MLOps is to test, automate your testing to make sure that the changes that you make will not break what you've already written. This is really a testing pyramid. You need to test the raw data, make sure that that data is correct. Uh, we have framework in Hopsworks called Great Expectations, which is very popular in both Python and PySpark for, for validating the data before it's written into the feature store. So following the no garbage in uh, model. Once you have your features, uh, your data in there and you've, you've tested it, you may want to say, well, I'm gonna test the features that are used to create those, uh, to create the, uh, the, kind of test the functions used to create those features. Because those functions are effectively a contract. So if somebody decided I'm going to change how a function is implemented, you'll change the, func the features that are created. And as we know, if you mix some feature data the width's implemented in one way with feature data implemented another way, you've now mixed it up and you'll, you'll, you'll break your models. So you want to unit test your features as well. You want to test your models, test them for performance, test them for bias, 
Um, and if they pass those tests and, and any other validation tests you have, they can be deployed against applications. And in that case, you may want to do what we call A-B testing, that you'll test your model against the application and run it in parallel with the old version. And only if the new version is performing well enough can you then decide to swap it out. So Hopsworks, our platform, brings all of these pipelines together. As I said already, the feature pipeline's output, its features and labels, can be stored in Hopsworks. The training pipeline can read from Hopsworks to get the features and labels and create the models and save them back to Hopsworks if you like to use our registry. If you use MLflow, that's totally fine. And then your inference pipeline, whether it's a batch program or an online inference program, can read the model from the model registry, read the features from Hopsworks that are pre-computed, and any features created on demand through user request information, they can be computed in there in Python functions that are managed again by Hopsworks. The last part of MLOps, uh, which is, remember we said it's about automated testing, and we had our testing pyramid. It's about monitoring these systems, but it's also about safely upgrading a system. And I mentioned already that A-B testing is a very useful thing for models. You can plug out one model, plug in another model, but the models are connected to the data. They're connected to the features that we're used to train the model on. And when you have a new version of a model, often you'll have a new set of features that we're used to train that model. But the new set of features also used for the inference in that model. So you need to connect your model to the features. So we'll have version models connected to version features. So when your model gets updated, the set of features or feature groups it's connected to will also be updated and they're linked together. So updating a model should be as easy as pressing a red button upgrade and reconnecting the model to the correct version feature groups. Similarly, if there's a problem in this updated model and you need to roll back, that should be just the big red button that you can press to roll back to the earlier version of the model that keeps using the earlier version of the features. So this is a very important uh, capability that you'll need to make it easier for you to upgrade models in production. With that, I'm uh, finished. That was a quick introduction to building machine learning systems, batch machine learning systems, real-time machine learning systems with a unified model, the feature pipelines, the training pipelines, and the inference pipelines and using Hopsworks to pull them all together. It's an open model, a modular model. It promotes communications between the teams that implement the different parts of the model, uh, the parts of the pipeline, and it makes it easier and faster and safer to get machine learning in production. Thank you.